Here to discuss and a first on CNBC interview is Gary Gensler, the SEC chair. Uh, chair, welcome and explain to us why, uh, uh, what are these now, uh, half penny increments we might be experiencing? Uh, yes, first, thank you for having me here and it's an honor to be following after Senator Kennedy. Um, but yes, our U.S. stock market is the most liquid, deepest in the world, can get better. And what we did today, as you said unanimously, is we relaxed a rule that we had put in place nearly 20 years ago that there was a minimum ability to quote stock prices in penny increments. At the time, that seemed like a good thing, but a lot's changed in 20 years. And so what we did today is said, we're relaxing something you can quote in half a penny, tightening, tightening that up while that's really good for investors broker dealers would have less of a spread in the middle we also in addition lowered the maximum amount that the stock exchanges can charge to access those bids and offers on the stock exchange from three tenths of a penny to one tenth of a penny and we added some additional liquidity to the market by adding transparency on uh, round lots, that's those are transactions above a certain size. So yep. I'm really proud of what we did today. I think it will help investors. Just to kind of put it in context, I think back to that Wall Street Journal article that said the sheriff of Wall Street has a bold agenda. The clock is ticking. They're referring, of course, to you, and that was in May. Um, is this a announcement bold as far as you're concerned, or should we be expecting something more in the kind of remaining time before this election? Well, I think it's consequential. I'll put it that way. I mean, we have 58% of American households that are invested in the stock market. This stock market could get more competitive, meaning lower costs. And so that's, I think it's consequential. And I'm, I'm really proud of what we're doing here for investors. I also think it promotes capital formation if you narrow the spreads for those in the middle, the, you know, the broker dealers. Now, you could go to a half a penny for, we estimate it will be about three quarters of the share volume could be quoted in narrower spreads and lowering the fees, these so-called access fees for the exchanges as well. How much might this save retail investors over, a, you take the period of time, three years, five years, one year? Well, look, any one trade you might say, or oh, could it save me a tenth of a penny or something? Uh, and that's real, but that adds up over, I mean, we trade literally, I think it's 11 billion shares a day. So it adds up and it's all, it's all in this 500 page plus document that we, uh, we published today also with economic analysis. Bring us up to date, if you wouldn't mind, on uh, the proposals, I think, from December of 2022 that would uh, reroute or pull away from off-exchange market makers like Citadel, uh, Virtu, and others uh, back to on-exchange. Where do you stand? Where Where is the progress or lack of progress on that? So here's the progress we've made. We've already implemented, fully implemented, in a role around the equity markets so investors get their money one day earlier. So if you sell a stock on a Monday, you get your cash on a Tuesday, you no longer have to wait till Wednesday. And that went in place in May of this year. Secondly, we adopted a rule that will go into effect next year for everyday investors to get better uh, information about their execution quality. And then of course today, the national market system, lowering the cost of the national market system. But you're right, we had some other proposals as well. And we continue to, to uh, assess the comment files. And we do everything based on public feedback, based on the economics. And so I don't have anything yet for you today. We continue okay. to just look at those comments. Let's talk crypto for just a moment. I, I don't want to say that you're enemy number one of the industry, but critics might uh, uh, say that. And we've seen such a change in tone. Kelly, I, Kelly, I, I don't know what you're talking about. On the presidential race. I, listen, this is just, I, I have a lot of people in town who uh, who work for these companies, and they, they'd love to see clearer rules uh, that could kind of uh, govern the, the industry. Your term is up, I think, in 2026. Now, uh, Trump, for sure, and to some extent, Harris, they, everyone seems to be warming up towards mainstreaming crypto as an industry. Um, what should we expect, uh, if anything, 
more from your agency on that front? We're going to continue to try to protect the investing public. This is a field that's rife with uh, fraudsters and scammers and grifters. It, it just has been. And there's nothing incompatible about the field with the basic protections that are in the securities laws. I mean, if you store something on an accounting ledger or record ledger called the blockchain, investors still need to have basic protections. And look, just if you look at the leading lights in this field in 2022, just two years ago, a number of them are in jail or waiting extradition and tens of billions of dollars been lost. So I would say that there's a lot of clarity. It's called the U.S. securities laws that have worked for 90 years.